is Gerald. I'm here with Abbott at Silverlight Aviation. And um, actually, what I came in today to see was some of the 915s he's got. Um, yeah, 915s in progress. All right, hold on, let's go look at them over here in the back. Sure. All right. This is uh, one of the 915s we recently just started our uh, engine installation on. This COVID-19 situation, the engines and everything is coming slightly late, but yeah, I think things are getting back to normal. So we are working, we just started this, so you kind of see this is how the engine kind of comes from the factory, right? And you can see which way the turbo is clocked here, and where the servo control is right there, turbo is clocked this way. And usually they just put out a intercooler that kind of like sticks out here like a sore thumb. And you know, usually your body is here, so the intercooler would be like sticking outside of the body looking strange. So we, I didn't like that. So we changed it actually. So we re the turbo and everything like that. And we can see that on the other one. Uh, this one, the wiring is being, I think the wiring is actually done. We were waiting on some avionics that are also taking some time. So. Here is like some raw material that we use for making our own intercooler kit, installation kit. So this is what we do. As you see, we actually re-clock the turbo so that this part used to be here. We re-clock the turbo so it goes here. So the turbo outlet is right there instead of being this, this way. So that's the main thing we did so that we can install the intercooler here. And then we also cut this down and then we do our own custom uh, intercooler piping completely here and there so that we can take one of us another type of intercooler that rotex supplies we buy that one instead of the standard one and we actually install it on the keel so that the propeller is pulling air right through it as it's running so it's basically this is the the uh, oil radiator and now because the 915 has gone to AN10 lines, so these are not AN8 lines, they're not half inch, they're five eighths. And the intercooler, we actually build all this custom piping and install the intercooler here that stops the intercooler from being like a sore thumb out. And uh, when there's a lot of different things with the 915. You need a four blade or a, another prop, which is much more expensive of course, because it has to absorb 140 horsepower now, instead of, you know, 115, like the 915 or 914. So you need to do that. The radiator brackets change. Um, you need a bigger, slightly bigger radiator. Uh, all those things, there are slight differences. The gearbox puts the propeller out two inches forward compared to the 912 or 914. So in that case, we have to change the pulley and get rid of the spacer to try to keep the prop within this area of the frame. So all those things are different. Uh, if you come on this side, of course the, the pipes for the coolant hoses are completely different as well. They come out at different spots and uh, if you, uh, we are waiting for the guy to come back to assemble. So, um, so the wiring is completely different. The fuel system is very different. And this is the fuel system, this is the oil thermostat right here. The fuel system is uh, with two fuel pumps, kind of like the 914 or the 912 IS, but it has one-way valves. It's done to Rotex uh, spec. Uh, I've seen a lot of 915 installations in gyroplanes recently. And what I'm finding out that, that the fuel system installation is not exactly how Rotex specifies, but we have taken our time and designed it so it's very similar to that. And this is this is the fuel pressure. This is where you put the fuel pressure. This is a one-way valve right here. And it's kind of difficult to see, but this is the main fuel filter, which is past the tank. So that's the fuel filter. And it has all these different customized fittings with, um, with little jets in them where they need them so that the vapor lock can be avoided. And those are the things that I've seen in some European models, um, you know, some of them that I've seen, they're missing. So uh, it's kind of like they're just pushing the fuel through, which is not exactly all you need to do. You need to do a lot more engineering than that, according to Rotex. So we try to do all of that stuff here. 
and figured out a compact way of doing all of that uh, jets and stuff that were needed for uh, so here is the fuel filter here's the bypass for the fuel filter so that one way valve here is where you would go and go into the feed line right here it crosses over goes to the other side and then there's a return line so all of that is done right here uh, there's a lot of things that we are installing like this stuff right here this will all and then there's a fuse box a big fuse box that will all get installed against the body so when the body goes on which the body is in paint right now actually he's supposed to pick it up today um it will get installed on the body so there is places on the body now that have actual installation of electronic components because there's a big huge fuse box with the is engines there is um there's a computer you know ecu redundant ecu that all get installed on the body that's why you don't that's why these things are all lying around because only when they get installed can we actually finalize uh, the wiring installation uh, or secure the wiring installation so these are the hick connectors that come from rotex i don't really like these but this is what they do this is what they give um but uh so the wiring is done half sort of from rotex and then the other half has to be done by the manufacturer um this is where this will go into the fuse box into the computers uh that's what happens you cannot you it's a can bus system aviation can bus so you have to kind of use um some system that can handle can bus in this case we have a 10 10 and a half inch uh, diagonal screen from mgl avionics called the challenger with uh, RDAS uh, IS, which is made for the IS engines, uh, remote magnetic heading sensor, uh, RDAC XG for the rotor RPM. So all of that stuff has to be all electronic. And every, the only thing that goes forward is only like three or four wires, because it converts everything into a digital stream of one and zeros, goes to the big screen, and the, that big screen takes that ones and zeros and reinterprets and then shows you the data. Wow, yeah. a lot going into the 915 then for Correct. the ARs. It's not as simple as 915 with a CAN bus and everything. It's not as simple as just put some analog gauges in and you're done. It's, it's a bit more complicated. Um, you have to go to an EFIS or at least to a system that understands CAN bus. Now, there are some companies that are making analog engine gauges that are CAN bus compatible. They kind of look analog, but in the back they have circuitry. So it's still complex. Uh, but that requires a lot of wires going forward. But uh, uh, yeah, so we, we of course, when we reclock the turbo, we have to make this bracket. And it's a very specific bracket because we want, you have to keep this part, which is the servo uh, actuator, you know, uh, right here. We have to keep wastegate actuator. That has to remain in the same spot. So when you reclock the turbo, you have to make a custom bracket that keeps this stuff right there and it's pretty stiff. It needs to be pretty stiff because this used to be secure to these two bolts. Well, we can't really, when we reclog the turbo, this is gone up here. So we have to make this bracket and secure it in another way. So this thing can remain where it is. It looks like you've done a lot of modifications to it at the end to yeah, get it. Yeah, yeah, some modifications to it for sure. Yeah, this, this changed, this is completely changed. Uh, intercooler piping is completely changed. Intercooler insulation is customized to our liking. Um, I wasn't, I wasn't happy enough just sticking out. Uh, I've seen some European manufacturers, their intercoolers are like sticking out right next to the body. You can kind of see a black intercooler, big, huge intercooler sticking out. That, you know, you buy a 80, 90, $100,000 machine and you have, you've got a sore thumb sticking out on the side. I didn't like it uh, aesthetically. So we uh, did that there. We know there's going to be a lot of airflow. The higher uh, boost you, you run, the more airflow will be through that uh, area because it'll be sucking air. It'll be negative pressure from the propeller. So, um, yeah, so it will, it will be good. And so the, you've got how many now? This is your, uh, you've got two, I see two here so far. Correct. Did, did you mention earlier you had another one coming as well? Yes, we have another one as well uh, that is uh, going to uh, be starting soon. So, yeah, we have three 915 orders right now, I think. Uh, I think what, what I'm seeing is people who want the 912 and then people who want the 915 and the people who wanted the 914 are kind of subsided. So 
maybe maybe the people who are buying 914 they'll go 50 15 or 915 or 914 is what i'm seeing uh this is going to colorado uh another one is going to utah so those are high altitude st states so i can you know that's where the 915 will shine fuel injected turbocharged intercooler 140 horsepower uh you know you can kind of understand why these guys are needing that you know this gentleman is going to be starting out at 7,000 feet airport elevation completely makes sense he needs a 915. Uh, utah is like 5,000 feet uh, airport elevation in the summer you're looking at 7,000 feet density altitude so completely makes sense you would want a 915 with a turbocharger and intercooler there uh, to get good performance to up in the summer um, you know it's it's a little bit overkill if you are like on this side of the united states on the east side of mississippi it's like do you really need it it doesn't give you any faster cruise really the vne hasn't changed the uh, velocity never exceed is still the same you're still going to cruise around 100 miles an hour so you know is it is it get you anything besides a shorter takeoff and uh, climb rate not really so i think you know people have to think about hey if i'm paying over and above 914 914 is the, the difference between 915 and 914 is going to be about nine thousand dollars you know because even if you go with the cheapest efas that can work with it it's an upgrade so you know the engine itself is seventy five hundred dollars more and then the upgrade of the smallest efas that can handle canvas you're looking at nine thousand dollar package plus a more expensive prop you know it's another thousand dollars for the prop so you're looking at ten thousand dollars extra for the package um minimally so is that worth if you are in florida i would say to me the answer is no but if you have the money why not but definitely where it's worth is places like colorado new mexico utah you know all these places like that uh high altitude high density altitude flying going above mountains and stuff it's definitely worth it there for sure it's it's almost a necessity here well, or if you're in trouble, it's nice to have more power. Oh, yeah, to... yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's all about uh, compromising, right? And all about coming up with a balance. So if money is no object, for sure. Uh, but I'm saying if somebody is thinking about, like, where should I spend my money? I would say spend more on training. Go with 914 if you're in Florida, right? Yeah. It's just about uh, just compromising. Because 914 gives quite an adequate performance. 912 gives open pocket AR1 is very good adequate performance. These are all enclosed. They are going to be enclosed. Okay, well, Ovid, thanks again for showing me the 915s, and I hope to see them completed and flying soon. Absolutely. We are back in construction with this after this COVID uh, uh, stuff. So, yeah, if people are interested, uh, give us a call. We'll go to civilizedaviation.com and check it out. We are going to be launching our new website actually next weekend or maybe the week after that. Uh, during the week, so check that out also. And wasn't there an article about one of your machines and oh, um, Sport yes. Pilot? Sport Pilot, uh, Sport Aviation Magazine from EAA. Uh, if you look in there under the experimenter section, uh, one of our award winning gyroplanes, uh, one of our customers, Russell Croman in Texas, he assembled his own gyroplane, uh, did a very nice job, and he actually won the Lindy Trophy at Oshkosh last year. So there is a full article, four or five page article on him. And about the AR1 uh, index uh, experimental section of Sport Aviation Magazine. If you are an EAA member, uh, you can check it out online, or if you get the Sport Aviation Magazine, check it out. It's in All right, thanks so much, Abid. Yeah, thank you.